Hello, and welcome to episode two in the Big Data MBA educational series. Episode two today, we're going to focus in on the Big Data Business Model Maturity Index, which is what I introduced in the first episode when we talk about the Big Data Story Map. Now, let me explain kind of the origins behind the Big Data Business Model Maturity Index when I first did this about seven years ago. There was this huge fascination with the three V's of big data, volume, variety, and velocity. And a lot of people kept talking about the three V's of big data, but it didn't translate into actionable, insightful monetization. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a vehicle to switch the conversation from the technical three V's of big data to what I would call the four M's of big data, make me more money. Yeah, what I wanted to do is have a vehicle that allowed us to work with customers to understand how do they leverage data and analytics to power their organizations, which led to this whole big data business model maturity index. And you can see here the very, the very heart of the big data business model maturity index is this question here. How effective is your organization at leveraging data and analytics to power your business models? As part of this transition from a technology three V's of big data conversation to a business centric four M's of make me more money. Now, when I asked the organizations this question, when I asked executives this question, they would look at me like I had lobsters crawl out of my ears. They, they had no idea how they, were, they would answer this question. They didn't know what good looked like. They didn't know how to benchmark themselves versus vis-a-vis -vis the best in practice in the industry. So as a result, in 2013, I came up with this big data biz model maturity index to help organizations understand how they move from a phase one, the business monitoring phase, which is using data and analytics to tell them what happened, this classic space of BI and data warehousing, right? And organizations were stuck in the business monitoring phase. They had spent so much time and money and effort to build out their BI and data warehouse markets that built reports, retrospective reports and dashboards on what happened, that they didn't have the guidance to become more predictive, more prescriptive, how to monetize the insights buried in the data and ultimately how to transform the organization. So I created this vehicle to help organizations understand where, not only where do they sit vis-a-vis -vis this best in practice, but how do they navigate? What's the realm of what's possible for them in order to navigate this to become and realize the four M's of big data? Now the big challenge for most organizations came though with how do I cross this analytics chasm, right? And we had the, the idea behind the, the um, crossing the chasm for, for many organizations with a technology challenge. It kept throwing more and more technology into this thing, when in reality, that wasn't the problem. And yes, there were characteristics of the data that were very powerful, right? I could integrate unstructured and data with detailed structured data. I could deploy uh, predictive analytics. I could leverage real-time data. But it, the key point for this whole process became the focus on the business processes here. And how was I able to leverage the economics of the data not the technology, but the economics of the data across the chasm. How was I able to leverage the economics of the data to uncover very individualized nuances on my customers, individual customers, individual products, individual operations and processes in order to cross the chasm so that I could become and move from being reporting centric to being to predict what was likely to happen to uncover the predictive insights, propensities, dependencies, inclinations that are buried in the data about your customer's product and operations. And if I could predict, then I could prescribe, right? I could, I could deliver prescriptive recommendations and, 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 and actions that would help organizations to optimize their key business processes. Very much an internal focus at this point in time. The first few stages here, very much focus on the internal optimization aspects. But what happens as you navigate along the big data business model journey index, you're gathering all kinds of insights about your customers' products and operations. Again, their tendencies, their inclinations, propensities, their biases, right? You are leveraging all that information not to monetize the data per se, but to monetize the insights about your customers' products and operations, to, under, to identify these unmet market needs, these white spaces, right? To come up with new services, new products, new offering, new consumption models, right? The idea, new channels and new audiences is to take all the insights that you are gaining from the first three phases, the very much internal phases, capturing all those insights in digital twin or asset avatars, whatever asset models you are, that I can use that to then create new monetization opportunities. 
And ultimately that leads to the fact that I can drive digital transformation. Now I will tell you right now that when I first came up with a digital transformation for, uh, you know, seven years ago, we actually didn't call it digital transformation. I called it metamorphosis, business metamorphosis. The term digital transformation sort of won out. And I've actually struggled for many years to find out what is a good definition of digital transformation. And by the way, I'm going to talk about in a, in a future podcast or episode, the difference between digitalization and digital transformation. They aren't the same. But think at this point in time, for, for lesson in this class, and we talk about digital transformation, we're talking about creating a, an environment of culture, both technically and human empowerment wise, an environment that's continuously learning and adapting, because we're gonna talk about later episode as well about why uh, the, the, why the uh, economies of learning are more powerful than economies of scale and knowledge-based industries. So we'll summarize this by going to the bottom here that says, you know, what is the exciting part about the four M's of big data? How can the big data business model maturity index help me to become more effective at leveraging data and analytics to power my business models? How can I navigate up this, this, this maturity curve? That's not a technology maturity curve, but it's a business model maturity curve. Well, as it says here, what we want to get to is in a point where we can help organizations envision how they can leverage all this detailed data, both structured and unstructured in real time to uncover those very granular customer product and operational insights that can power these new monetization opportunities. Thank you, and we'll see you in episode three.